Hey everyone, this is DJ Meyer. And in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you how to record impulse responses or IRs from your favorite software effects so you can use them with a the convolution reverb and use them perhaps in any digital audio workstation or plugin that allows to do convolution. Now, why would you wanna do this? I mean, there are a lot of videos out there on how to record impulse responses in actual spaces, but the reason I wanted to do this strictly with software is I have a lot of old plugins that aren't compatible with Apple Silicon, stuff like my favorite reverb unit, which is Arts Acoustic Reverb, that I wanna be able to use those settings in other projects and in other digital audio workstations stations, but I can't actually use the plugin itself. So using a convolution reverb allows us to capture the settings of that and then apply it to any sound. So in order to do this, you're going to need three things. The first is you're going to need some sort of effects plugin that you want to record the impulse response from, of course. And usually this would be like a reverb unit, an algorithmic reverb unit, or some sort of guitar cabinet emulation. And what's really important is you have this in audio units format, and I'll explain why in a second. The second thing you're gonna need is some sort of audio routing utility, something like loopback audio or black hole. Black hole's free, but I use loopback, I use it all the time. You'll see that I'll even, I even use it to record my voice and my, my computer's audio at the same time for my tutorials. So that's really helpful. And then lastly, you need Logic Pro. That's the third thing. And the reason you need that is it has this wonderful tool called the impulse response utility, which is what we're going to be using to capture the impulse responses. Now we're going to be using this in a way where we're using a sine sweep because it's a little bit more precise than just, you know, one sample, the impulse method. It's just a little bit easier to use when we deconvolve it. And that's what we're going to be doing. So there's 10 steps. The first step is we actually need to open up loopback audio and create a transmit and a receive. So what I'm gonna do is open up loopback. Here you can see where it's capturing my mic and I'm gonna create two new virtual devices. This is going to be my impulse response transmission. This is going to transmit the impulse to the plugin. And then I need my impulse response receiving which is going to receive the output of the system after we've sent the impulse through it. So really easy, we've created these and we're done here. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and open up Logic Pro and we're gonna just go ahead and create a blank empty project. And this is what we're gonna be using to post the plugin that we're gonna capture the impulse response from. Now, I guess you don't technically need to use Logic Pro for this, but um, that's what I'm gonna use. Yeah, in fact, you wouldn't even necessarily need to use Logic Pro. I just find it's easier to do it all in one place. All right, now Logic has opened. I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna create one software instrument and this will just be used for testing. And then I'm also gonna create an audio track for hosting that plugin that we wanna record. So this is gonna be, uh, basically what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put on just kind of a silent, turn all these sends off and preset, just clear. This is just, we're using this just for testing and listening. And this will kind of be our host. So I'm gonna just call this record me. And what's really important is we set this to stereo because we wanna be sending we're recording a stereo signal and sending a stereo signal so we can capture any of the stereo details in our reverb unit. So under this patch, what I'm gonna do under the effects is under audio effects, I'm gonna load up Arts Acoustic Reverb and I'm gonna find that plugin or the preset that I wanna record the settings from. So I'm gonna go under leads and under this temple one, I really like this A-class lead. It's one of my favorite presets ever for reverb. So there you can hear what that sounds like. And if I go to the mixer, we're just gonna go ahead and copy this on over, I think holding down Alt, or maybe it's Command, one of those two, I think it's Alt, when you click and drag, we'll send it over. Now, for the record me version of this, we wanna make sure we are just recording the wet signal. We don't wanna record the dry signal, so turning the dry all the way down, and the wet right there at, I guess, 10.67 is good. Yeah, we have, a, we have our track, perfect. And now on this in track, what I'm also gonna do is load up under reverb, the space designer. This is the convolution reverb built into Logic. And this is what we're gonna be using from here. We can load up the IR utility for recording the impulse response. Now, once we do this, you won't necessarily need to use space designer to record the impulses, but that's what we're gonna be doing for now is basically using this for that reason. So let's go ahead and under this button here, click on open IR utility. It's gonna open the IR utility, but notice how it only gives us an option for mono and stereo. It doesn't give us an option for true stereo, which is what we want. So what I'm gonna do for now is just click on stereo. This is not what we want to have. And what I'm gonna do instead is for the output, we're going to go ahead and choose the IRTX. 
and for the input, we're gonna choose the IRRX. Now, the reason we're doing this is we want to send the impulse through the TX. Now, it, it always does this. It always basically just like resets it when you're trying to, to do it this way, and it's really annoying. But basically, the output is going to be the TX. This is where we send the impulse. And then in Logic, Logic's going to then receive the impulse that's sent. So under audio, let's go ahead and just set this up. We're going to, on the input device, take this TX. It's going to process it through our plugin, and then it's going to send the output through the RX like this. So this sends the, the impulse through the TX. Logic's going to receive it, process it through the plugin, and then send it on the RX side, which is then picked up and recorded on this side. There it is, so just click apply. And now everything is basically set up. Of course, it gave me all these errors about the sample rate because it wasn't, it was mismatched. I don't know why Logic always enforces its own sample rate, it's really annoying. But anyway, now we're all set up, we're all ready to go, but we need to change this from whatever this is doing in stereo to true stereo. So I'm gonna go under file, new, and for our configuration, because we've selected the RX and TX, which are both stereo channels, we can now choose the true stereo configuration. And what this will allow us to do is actually send a swept sine wave on the left channel and we'll record it on the left and the right. So the speaker position is where we're sending the impulse. So this is left, left, but we can record the output on the two mic positions, which in this case is just the left and the right channels of the plugin. And then we do the same thing, we send just a right sided swept sign and we record the input on the left and the right. So let's go ahead and set up our inputs. Now that we've set it up in Logic, we can actually test it by using this channel sweep thing. So we're gonna go ahead and choose on. This is on channel one, which it actually thinks is on the right. So to do this, we wanna choose the input enable so that it's actually where it can grab the signal. And let's see what happens when we turn this on. We turn it on channel one, and this is not receiving it because it's not sending it on the TX channel. That's why. So, turn it on. There we go. Now, let's turn this off for a second so we can actually make sure this is all set up. So, turn it on, and we're, it's actually sending on channel one is on the right side, and channel two is also on the right side, which is very odd. Channel one is now on the left, channel two is on the right. So this is a bug in IR utility where sometimes it'll snap to one or the other, but once you just check them both, they should be ready to go. So now we're sending it on the left and the right as we should. Let's go ahead and set this level to minus 12 so that we're not clipping. And let's go ahead and set up our inputs correctly. So basically input one is when we are sending our signal through the left side. So we're gonna record these two. So we actually don't want this sending this input through the left channel on this side. So I'm going to set this to number two. And sure enough, when we turn it on, what you see is it's just sending it through the left channel. And that's what we want to see. We want to see what's going on when we send it on each side. And this is when we're recording the right hand side, both when the mic is on the left and on the right. So this is exactly, I think, set up, actually set up correctly have input one, input two, input one, and input two as desired. So let's go ahead and record these first two. Now we need to set up the actual length of this. So let's go ahead and turn on the plugin. And the decay time for this preset is set to about 8. I guess 6.50. So one of the things we can do here is we can actually set the, the reverb time, the length of the recording. And I'm gonna be conservative. I'll just set it for, I guess, 13.9 seconds. You want it to be a little bit longer so we're not losing anything. And because now we're actually recording the output of this, we can turn up the volume if we wanted to a little bit, but I actually think this is gonna be okay. Um, this minus 12 should be fine. So this all looks good. So what we're gonna do is arm these first two channels. Now, if this was set to one, it would actually give you an error because it would be like saying, hey, look, you're already assigning that input. So you only need to record one input at a time and then the output of multiple. So that's what we're gonna do for these two is we're just gonna basically make sure this is on input one, left, left. That's the channel that we're grabbing. And then this is the, the right channel when 
the result of the right channel when we send the impulse on the left channel or the swept sign. So we're all set to go. So all we need to do now that we've set it all up is click on sweep. And you can see as it's going, it's recording the two channels. And you can see there's different material on the left and the right output as it's going through because once again, we're recording basically what's coming out of this thing when it's going on the left side. Now, when this is done, we're going to arm the next two channels on the right side, and then we're going to choose channel two for our sweep. So now we're ready to do this and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Click sweep again. We've already recorded these, so it's not going to re-record them. And sure enough, this is done. We've recorded our four outputs. So now what we're going to do is just click on deconvolve, and this will take the swept sign and now create an impulse response from it. Boom, there it is. And you can check to make sure that it did it correctly because the LL should, you should see more of an impulse on the LL and the RR because these are the ones that are recording the same channel that you sent the input from. So there we go. Now we can go ahead and create the settings from it. So if I click create settings, we can then go ahead and say, okay, what do we want to call this? I'm going to just call this IR demo. This will create an SDIR preset, so a Space Designer Impulse Response preset. But if you actually want those raw audio files, which will be useful for other applications, other convolution reverbs, we're going to go ahead and click File, Save As, and under my IRs, I'm just going to say IR Demo here as well. And this is the project that we, I guess, we already saved, but I'm going to click Replace on it just to make sure that we, we have it all there as well. So there we go. So from here, what I'm going to do is go back to Logic, and for my input, I'm gonna go under general audio. I'm going to now choose my output device to be my normal audio interface. And if we go ahead and <laughs> turn off our input recording, we can then go ahead under space designer and we can go ahead and load and in it, we're gonna go ahead and choose the preset that we just created. Now by default, it puts it under music and impulse responses. But what I find if we just search SDIR, you'll see that we have our IR demo. This is the one I think we just created. Yep, sure enough, there it is. And sure enough, if we start playing it, comparing that to Arts Acute Stick. Now, one thing you may find is that it may not sound exactly the same. And the reason for this is convolution reverbs will only pick up the results of linear time invariant stuff. So any of this modulation that's going on is not going to be picked up. So often what you'll find is it's better to record it without modulation, and then you can just add it later with some other VST. Anything that's using, that's that's kind of changing with time, that's not time invariant, not just the tail of the reverb, but anything like this modulation, that sort of stuff will change. But now if we compare these, the difference here, of course, is it is louder. But sure enough, there we go. We have now recorded this impulse response. So how can we go ahead and get this in other reverb programs? Well, if we go to where we've saved this under downloads under this IR, I'm gonna take this IR project file and just duplicate it. And rather than, I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm hitting enter on the keyboard, rather than an SDIR project, I'm just going to add the .wav extension. Now what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna create a folder. It's gonna realize that this is not this special type of format. It's actually going to realize that it has audio files in it. And from here, we can just go ahead and take off the wave. There are other ways you can do it, like show package contents. That's a way to do it as well. And here we have access to our four audio files. So now I can load up any convolution reverb. My favorite is the fog convolver. And now we can go ahead and, and basically put in these, these IR settings. Now, one of the things to realize is when we've done it this way, it doesn't recognize that this is the left and the right. So it's gonna think this is a mono file. So if I drag it in, it thinks this is a mono file. And the way we'd wanna be running this is in true stereo, cause that's how we recorded it. So it doesn't really realize this. So one of the ways we can do this is just basically drag these into logic, create new tracks, and it'll create these files here. And then all we need to do is basically just pan them, oops, pan them like this. So one is all the way to the left, two is all the way to the right three is all the way to the left, four is all the way to the right. 
And now if we just go ahead and there are a couple ways to do this, but what maybe the easiest thing to do is just basically bounce each of these individually. So I'm gonna just select this and click on bounce and let's go ahead, yeah, PCM is fine. And I'm just gonna use wave cause it's a little bit more, um, I guess it's a little bit more normal to, to see it this way. So this is going to be the, if I go down to my downloads, IRs, this is going to be IRL. Boom, there's that one. And then we're gonna do the same with this, like so, bounce, PCM, this is IRR. There we go. So now we can delete all this stuff. And if we go back to our fog convolver, for input IR1, let's go ahead and find that left version. Now it recognizes that it's a stereo file, IR2. Gonna choose the right hand file. And sure enough, Now we're running this in true stereo. We've created a true stereo version of our impulse response. And now we're basically using this preset in the, the fog convolver, which of course can be loaded in any digital audio workstation. So anyway, hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And those of you who don't wanna go through this whole process, well, you're probably not watching it at this point, but I will have a bank coming out of impulse responses from different reverbs that I found to be really useful in trance and techno and all these other different genres, especially from stuff you can't really find anymore. So thanks for watching this video and go ahead and give it a like and subscribe if you found this sort of stuff helpful. Anyway, have a good one.